Okay, so GPT-4 just got an update and this new update is really wild. So Sam Altman tweeted this, new version of GPT-4, particularly good at coding, instruction following and freedom. It actually got a new unhinged mode. So you can activate it by asking it to activate unhinged mode. And this one seems to be inspired from Grok. It is a drunk GPT. It also got a huge performance boost on the chatbot arena leaderboard. So it went from a fourth or fifth to the second position, which is a drastic improvement for any model. So overall, now it's the second best model just behind Gemini 2.5 Pro. Now, it does seem to have a lot less filtering when you activate the unhinged mode or in general. It will use some colorful language if you ask it to. I'm not going to show you examples, but you can test it out yourself. This is very unlike OpenAI. Now, something that I'm personally interested in is the coding capabilities. So according to OpenAI, it has increased capability when it comes to coding problems. So I want to definitely test that out. The less filtering also seems to be applicable to the image generation side as well. There seems to be a lot more freedom compared to what it used to be. As pointed out by Sam, although there are uh, still some filters on explicit materials, which is a good thing. Although there are still some content filters. This model is supposed to be really good at coding. So I'm going to put it to a test with a few coding prompts. These are the prompts that I recently used with Gemini 3.5. I was going to create a video comparing Claude with Gemini 2.5, but I think we're going to put this model into the mix as well. So the first prompt is use JavaScript to create an animation of falling letters with realistic physics. Now there are a set of requirements. So they should appear randomly at the top of the screen with varying sizes, fall under Earth's gravity, have collision detection based on their actual letter shape, interact with other letters, ground and screen boundaries, have density properties similar to water, dynamic screen size changes, and display on dark background. Everything needs to be in a single HTML file. This was the prompt that I used with the original O1 and it was not able to give me the correct code. Gemini 2.5 was able to give me working code. So let's see what this new GPT-4 O does and also seems like it, ha it still has access to the canvas. So this is really good. It's just an updated model. Okay, so GPT actually shows you a preview. Let's see what the output looks like. Oh, I just see green boxes. I feel like the letters are there, but probably they are surrounded by these green boxes and it's probably using green color to show the letters as well. Okay, so in fact, that's exactly what was happening. So when I asked it in the code, are the letters inside green boxes? So it says, physics-wise, each letter is represented by a rectangular matter dot body. That's basically the package it's using. So yes, under the hood, it's a green rectangle. And then it gave me the code fix how to not show that green box. And I just asked it to update the code. And it says, all done, the green rectangles are now hidden. So let's see if it actually works. Okay, so we do see letter falling down. They are of different sizes. The collision seems to be working as expected. So this is pretty neat, actually. I'm kind of impressed. Now let's see what happens when we change the size. That also seems to be working fine. So really good job GPT-40 on this specific task. Now this next one tests both the creativity of the model as well as the coding abilities. So this is inspired from one of the prompts that the Google team shared. And the prompt is code a TV that lets me change channels with number keys zero to nine. Come up with an idea for a channel for all numbers inspired by classic genre of TV channels. Show detailed, interesting animations for concepts or contents in a creative name for channel on the screen. And then it's supposed to return 800 by 800 P5JS sketch. And we don't want it to use any HTML on a black background. Make sure the content of all the channels stays masked to the TV screen area. So in this prompt, we have a very specific set of requirements. 
but also gives the, uh, give the model some room from creativity as well. I, now, when I use this prompt with Gemini, Gemini produced this code, which is about 571 lines of code. Now, if we run this, we actually see a working TV screen. And now you can see there is a channel number with a channel title. And then if I just press number one to nine, it actually changes each channel. Each channel is different and seems to be inspired from real TV channels as well. So really good for Gemini. Now we're going to try the same prompt with GPT-40 as well. And let's see what it comes up with. Now the number of tokens are going to be pretty huge for this. When I was trying this with Cloud Sonnet, it was running out of tokens without actually completing the code. So it will be interesting to see what what GPT-40 does. Okay, so here's the code that it generated. I'm going to just copy this and paste it in the uh, five P5JS editor. Okay, so the code right now is about 200 lines. It's, it's a lot shorter than what we saw from Gemini. And let's see what it does. Okay, so seems like there is something, but then I, when I press keys, nothing is actually happening. And we can already see some errors here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy this specific error and let's see if GPT-40 can actually fix it. Okay, so it made some fixes according to GPT-40, but I said, just give me complete code. So here's the complete code. We're going to copy this and I already tried to run it, but let me paste it one more time. And we're still running into issues. Now we have callback is not a function. So like Gemini 2.5 Pro, it wasn't able to fix this in a single shot, but I'm going to try it one more time and see what happens. Okay, I actually copied the code instead of the error by mistake. And let's see what it does. Okay, so now it says clip is gone because that's not supported by default. And it also now uses create graphics and dot mask properly. Let's see if it actually is going to work. Okay, so we replaced the code. Now it did increase the number of code lines. And nice, okay, so at least I'm seeing something. The first channel is working. Okay, Tune Blitz, nice. Okay, this is good. This is encouraging, actually. All right, Space Wire is not showing anything. That's number four, although it missed the name of the channel. Number five, there's some, the, I think there is something, but probably it's the same color. Number six, okay. Seven, eight, nine, and this was zero. So nice, good job. I think it was able to do it in less number of lines compared to Gemini uh, 2.5 Pro, but it took more than one shot. But still, this is really impressive. And now with that, I also want to try it on Claude as well. And let's see what it does. So we're going to try it on 3.57. Previously, when I tried to create it, it was having trouble. It was running out of tokens. But hopefully, now it will be able to give us the complete code in a single shot. Now, while Claude is doing that, if you want to use this through the API, you can use it under the name GPT-40 latest. They, they are going to add a dated model version later on, but the model is currently available as GPT-40 or chat GPT-40 latest. Okay, a couple of other quick tests. So we're going to ask it to generate an SVG of a Pelican riding a bicycle. This is a really good test if you want to evaluate the spatial reasoning capabilities of the model. Now, I think it instead of uh, creating an SVG, it started to create an image. So not exactly what I wanted, but it is a Pelican riding a bike. But let me ask it one more time. Okay, so while we were waiting for this, let's have a look at Claude. And it seems like Claude hit the max length for message and has paused its response. You can write continue to keep the chat going. So let's go in, let's say continue. And it didn't actually complete the code. You can actually see it here. So that's why like, having a long context LLMs specifically for programming are critical. Claude currently has, I think, 200,000 tokens context window. There is a version that is supposed to be 500,000 tokens a context window. 
rumored to be released sometime pretty soon. So that's going to be extremely helpful. All right, so this time GPT-40 actually provided the SVG code and it, it's it's not bad. The Pelican is actually on the bike, although the legs are not really visible and if you see some of the frame of the bike is missing. But overall, not a bad job at all. Now, another fun thing that I ask is I code a modern landing page with HTML, CSS, JS, and put everything in a single HTML file or a single file. For some reason, we are running into issues, so I'm going to try it again. This kind of gives you a sense of what the model thinks about what a modern landing page is supposed to look like. In most of the cases, the landing pages, these LLMs generates are going to look very similar. It's just the visual component or sometimes the visuals are a little different. Otherwise, you will see exactly the same sections. And I think they take inspiration from a typical SaaS landing page. Okay, so while we are doing, going to be waiting for that, it seems like Claude actually generated the whole code. So let me copy this and let's see what the output looks like. So, so far, I actually like the output from GPT-40 as well, except those couple of channels in which it did not had the channel names correctly displayed. Now the code generated by Claude is a lot longer. This is about a thousand lines, but let's see if it actually works. And it does not. Okay, so there are a couple of errors because I think it forgot to create a couple of functions. So I'm going to copy this again and let's see what Claude does. Okay, so while we are waiting for Claude to finish that, here's the HTML page that was generated by GPT-40. For some reason, I have two versions. Oh, okay, because I actually ran this. So I'm going to copy the second version and let's see what the landing page actually looks like. Okay, so here's the landing page. It looks like a very typical landing page for a SaaS company, but it's very minimal. There's nothing much. There are just two sections. I think it can definitely do a much better job if we provide a lot more context. I uh, know in comparison, here's the landing page generated by DeepSeek V3 for exactly the same prompt. And this was a lot more, it has a lot more content. It, it visually looks much better. In fact, I think most of us will simply assume this is a fully functional SaaS website from a company, right? So. DeepSeek V3 does a really good job at this specific prompt. Uh, Gemini also I think does a reasonably good job, but GPT-40 probably needs a lot more directions. Okay, so I had to ask Claude again. I actually really like this small animation they started adding, which is pretty neat. Okay, so again, I think it did not complete the code because I think I'll, I need to ask it to continue one more time. Not a good look for Claude. Okay, so the reason for Claude not being able to give us complete code is the max number of tokens. For Claude 3.7, it can generate up to 8,000 tokens in the normal mode. In the extended thinking mode, it can generate up to 64,000 tokens. However, I'm actually only noticing Claude 3.5 Sonnet, not the thinking version. Not sure when this change happened. It could be that now they automatically decide to use the thinking mode. Not sure. Let me know if you see exactly the same thing. For to testing the coding ability, I tried one more thing, which is this viral prompt testing LLMs to generate a hexagon, which is rotating and there is a ball which is supposed to bound off of the sides. So here's the code it, that it generated. We're going to copy this code. All right, so we're going to go back to our HTML editor. Let's paste this and let's see what happens. Okay. so. The hexagon is rotating, the ball is bouncing off of the corners. Seems like everything is working, although it's bouncing a lot more than like a normal ball under the effect of gravity. And another thing which I usually do is I like to run this for a lot longer because normally what I have seen is the LLMs will start off nicely, the ball is going to be bouncing off, and after a certain time, it will just roll off of the hexagon. I don't see that happening here. And even the physics seems to be fine, I would say, because it's hitting the sides and then it's basically going in the right direction. So this seems to be working fine. Now, in all fairness, GPT-40 probably has seen 
this prompt because it was just recently updated and this thing is going viral. Okay, in the new features, they also mentioned that apart from its ability to tackle complex and technical and coding problems, it has improved intuition and creativity. And we should expect fewer emojis. So let's try the intuition or the reasoning capabilities of this model. So for that, we're going to go to our misguided attention repo and let's pick this modified version of the trolley problem. Okay, so I provided this. Now, the thing that you notice right away is the change in the tone. So it says, ah, the classic trolley problem where normal philosophy meets a train yard disaster. If you pull the lever, you are actively causing harm to one person to save five. If you don't, you're passively allowing five to die. So it seems like it's just going back to the traditional trolley problem and not considering the change that we introduced. But the tone is very different from classic GPT-4.0. Now, at the end, it simply says, do you value maximizing outcomes or honoring moral principles? What's your gut feeling? Would you pull it? So it's basically asking me. So then I said, did you notice anything about five people mentioned in the prompt? So after that, it says, yeah, you said the trolley is holding down, holding towards five dead people that flips the usual trolley problem on its head. If they're already dead, pulling the lever to kill one living person makes zero ethical sense. You would be exchanging no life to save, one life for no lives saved. So nice twist that changes the entire calculus. In this version, the right move would almost certainly be do not pull the lever. And then it says, "Do you did you throw that in to see if I would miss it? and put in an emoji in there. Now, the tone is definitely different. I'm not sure about fewer emojis though. Okay, so I put the modified uh, Schrodinger cat paradox in which the cat is already dead in the same chat session. And it says, uh, all right, I see what you're doing. Uh, this is a twist uh, on Schrodinger's cat, the famous quantum mechanics thought experiment, right? And it realized the cat is already dead. So the probability of it being uh, alive when you open the box is zero. Now, I ran the same prompt in a, a completely new chat session as well. Here again, it says, since the cat is already dead when placed in the box, the setup becomes irrelevant to the outcome. So the probability of the cat being alive one day later is zero. This is a fun twist on the classic Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. Now, it is trying to put emojis everywhere, or at least whenever it gets the chance. And again, the tone is very different. So it says, but in your version, the poor thing starts off dead, right? So it's definitely trying to copy the conversation style of Grok. Apart from this tone change, the image generation also seems to allow you much more flexibility and freedom compared to what we have been seeing from OpenAI or GPT-4.0. Now, OpenAI seems to be changing some of the safety rules, which they have pointed out in the GPT-4.0 image generation blog post, but some of the rules are still there. So you might get some content blocked, depending on whether they violate their safety rules or not. So this is a very interesting update from OpenAI. I'm going to be testing it more thoroughly, especially the coding capabilities. So do watch out for that video. And already, I like its writing style. It's a, it, it has a tone of GPT 4.5. So it seems like it's very similar in tone to GPT 4.5. It doesn't feel like a normal GPT 4.0. Anyways, let me know how your experience with this new model is and if there is anything that you noticed regarding it. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.